A vertical tube is filled with water. Sound wave move down the tube and is reflected by the surface of the water. That tells me that in this tube, the top is the open end and the water level is the close bound close end of the tube because it's like it's a boundary where the wave will reflect back and so you'll form a stationary wave in the top part the frequency of the sound wave is gradually increased from zero until a much louder sound is heard so here you are changing the frequency f is your variable so you have different kind of patterns form inside there okay so water uh oh forgot to say when you hear a much louder sound when you see this kind of phrasing it means a stationary wave has formed stationary wave Water is removed from the tube until a second louder sound is heard. Which diagram shows a new pattern of the stationary wave that is formed? So the first one, you have some kind of uh, wave that forms. It is going to be something like this, where you have a node. I don't, I don't know which overtone is it, but as long as you have a node and an anti-node at the ends of this tube, you are good. You have uh, a n a n a n in between. That's fine. So this is what we call a stationary wave. And then you have a your water is removed from the tube until you hear another loud sound. Why does that occur though? So we can try to draw this out. I guess it will look something like this. Okay. So I'm gonna create a second tube right here. A small eraser. There we go. And now we have the water level that has been removed, so it's kind of be much lower, I guess, so somewhere here. And the water is down there. So right now you have a second much louder sound. Why is that? Or oh, not not second much louder, a second loud sound. That means another overtone. Another pattern of stationary wave has formed. That one will have something like this. So you have a node and another node here. Whoa, this is kind of out of shape like that okay so the conditions are still the same it is still closed on one end so you must have a node at the end and you must have an anti node on the other end but now you have a node and an anti node you have new friends an additional lambda over two okay that's called one loop lah. okay loop so now your pattern has an ex extra loop inside there and that is lambda over two in terms of length so what are they asking? What's the pattern? Oh, so we can look at this law. I mean, we already, <laughs> we already draw the, I already draw the pattern for you, but let's go through and see why the others are wrong. So the first one, what is wrong with A? This is very important for you to know. Remember the conditions? If this is a closed end and this is an open end, then this must be a node and this must be an anti node at the end. But what is this? Excuse me, this is not correct. Why do you draw a note there? No, 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 wrong. How about B? B has another problem. Yes, you have a note, an uh, anti-note here, but you need a note down here. What is this? This is wrong. C, very good. The boundary where it's closed is a node. The boundary where it is open is an anti-note. Very good. Okay, D. What's wrong with D? Ah, oh, you can see this. So this one here should be a node. It's wrong. It should be a node. And this one here, anti-node, that, that's fine. So the best answer is C for this thing. Long. You need to know how to recognize the patterns. Boundary conditions for a stationary wave in open pipes, open closed pipe and things like that. Okay, so that's all for this question. Hopefully they help you understand stationary waves a little better. Any doubts, just comment below. But that is all for this video. I will see you in the next one.